Hi, my name is Warren Togami, and today I am demonstrating the features of the upcoming K12 Linux EL6 release. K12 Linux is an open source Linux based thin client and terminal server platform that is built upon the LTSP toolkit, that is the Linux terminal server project. Please visit k12linux.org to learn more. So we'll get right into demonstrating the features. Uh, here is the server, um, uh, which is a fairly old but still powerful uh, Intel Core 2 uh, Duo processor with uh, several gigs of RAM, uh, which is plenty to run a good number of thin clients. Um, I'm logged in on the local console here. Um, it's running Scientific Linux 6, which is a clone of, um, of Enterprise Linux 6. Um, uh, this operating system should be pretty good until um, the, the year 2017 when they plan on 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 discontinuing the updates for for this release. Uh, here we're looking at, at k12linux.org, which is the home page for this project. Okay, and we'll uh, we'll get directly into booting the thin client, which we have right here. Um, this is a ordinary Intel Atom-based netbook. And I will start it up right now. I'm hitting power. Okay, and while that's uh, booting up, um, I'll explain a little bit more. Um, you, you can see this cable here is just an Ethernet cable plugged into the Ethernet of the thin client, which also plugs into the Ethernet of the of the server. So this is the easiest way to test a single client. And here it is. It is Pixie booting off of the network. The server is running a DHCP server, which gave it a network address and the and the BIOS of the thin client here downloaded. Um, it, it was assigned a network address, and then um, it it has now booted off the network, and now it is loading its operating system over the e Ethernet. So it's not touching the hard drive of the thin client. Um, the the ideal thin client should have no disk on board. Um, so both the server and the client OS um, are are based in Scientific Linux six. And here is the login screen. Uh, might be a little hard to see on the video. Um, that's a K twelve Linux logo. Um, still have to fix some bugs uh, with the login screen. So for now. Um, I'm logging in as my test user and test password. Now, what you're seeing here is a a GNOME desktop session that appears to be running on this machine, but it's actually not. It's running over the network on the server here, and and this machine is only using the display and the keyboard and the mouse um, and the audio devices and the input output devices um, to uh, interact with the, the the desktop session and, and, and all of the applications that are actually running on the network. Oh, okay. And, uh, let's see. Uh, the the Linux terminal server project and K12 Linux um, allows you to deploy a large number of fairly low cost thin clients with all the basic applications. Uh, here we can demo uh, OpenOffice which is launching very quickly because it's already in memory on the server. And let's close that. And here is Firefox. Um, here I'll, I'm demoing that um, the thin client is able to run now keep in mind that this application is running over the network on the server let's see if I can make it louder Here we go. Okay, so the sound is roughly in sync with the video So that's one capability. Um, it's actually putting both the video and the sound over the network simultaneously. And this browser is running over the network on the server. Now, 
LTSP is also capable of what's known as local apps. So here is Firefox and I'm running a launcher. Now what, what local apps means is that it can actually use the processor and memory of the client uh, t to, to reduce the load on the server and for, for, for multimedia applications that may be a good thing because it takes a lot of bandwidth for video to transmit over the network. So here I am loading the same YouTube video on the Firefox and it's pretty much the same thing except there there is less lag as the video it is no longer transmitting over the network so if you do a, a K12 Linux deployment you may want to run um, multimedia um, heavy applications like web browsers uh, especially if you're doing video in YouTube um, you may want to run those applications as local apps. Now that means that your client hardware must be more powerful. This is a, a first generation a single core Intel Atom and the first generation Intel Atom kind of struggles to run these applications at, at a decent speed. Um, it, in my experience um, the HP thin clients with the 64-bit Sempron processors um, that, that can have one or two gigs of RAM are absolutely excellent for running local apps and let's see here okay and another feature um, that I can demonstrate um, other than local apps is the ability for the thin clients to mount a, a remote USB storage. So here I have a ordinary USB stick and I am inserting it into the, the, the USB port of the thin client. Okay. And there we go. See here? The disk uh, popped up on the desktop. Now, now keep in mind that this software here, this interface is running on the server, so it's actually forwarding the USB device over the network to the server here uh, and mounting the file system of the device so that the, the desktop applications here are, are able to access it. So now I can, I can go into the device and it happens to have a AUG file. And and this again is is demonstrating the 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 remote sound capability of of K12 Linux. Now let me close this. And the really nice thing about uh, the remote USB uh, storage capability of of K12 is as long as you have have saved all your data and you're no longer changing anything on the drive. You can just unplug it and the device will disappear and you're, and you're good. Let's see, uh, I believe, okay, there is one more feature that I would like to, to demonstrate uh, of, of K12 Linux. And that is, uh, after you have installed it and you want to test the, the, the booting of a thin client, uh, while it's fairly easy to plug a single thin client in by Ethernet like this and do a pixie boot, uh, there is another uh, convenient method of testing the thin client boot and that is using a virtual machine. Uh, by using by using Vert Manager, see? Uh, um, that's just a launcher to, to Vert Manager. The instructions uh, for setting this up are on k12linux.org. Okay, let's try to launch that. Oh, okay, it's already running. Okay. And I have defined a Pixie client machine, which is a virtual machine with half a gig of RAM, uh, but no hard drive, and it's told to boot off of it, um, off of its. It, it's a virtual e Ethernet card, and I can run that machine. And let me open the view. So now, 
it's doing a pixie boot and it is downloading okay uh, there goes the DHCP it uh, downloaded the kernel and it is booting the thin client exactly in the same way as the real client did except this is a virtual machine so, so this is just a convenient way to test your thin client uh, you don't actually have to plug things together um, and eventually this will get to the login screen and okay there we go um, you, you may want to go to the view menu and then select full screen to use the the, the virtual pixie client uh, comfortably okay and okay so so that's all the basic features of, of K12 Linux uh, uh, there are a, a number of bugs that still have to be fixed and this is still under development you may see the status uh, at k12linux.org along with the, the ongoing fundraiser uh, to to support development of this work uh, uh, thanks for watching